What a great tune that was. That was I Love a Rainy Night. Now it's not raining outside right now. We are getting into the snow season, but great tune anyways. Who doesn't love Eddie Rabbit? Hey, absolutely fantastic. And it's a blast from the past. Very important, right? So I hope you're enjoying the show so far. And it is time for dun 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 dun, dun the good news. Really need a drum roll, hey? Actually, if I look around here, um, there's probably a drumstick <laughs> somewhere I could do that. I have to get my skills down, though. You know, here at Bottoms Up, um, on Wednesday nights, they have an open jam where anybody can come, bring your instrument, and get involved and, and play along. And if you're a drummer, there's a full drum kit. You just bring your sticks and, and jump in. It's a very awesome event. Um, and it's very good energy, right? Positive energy. Because you have a nice collection of people and you leave your woes away. Drink if you want, don't drink, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and play some music. So, unfortunately, I am uh, not educated on any instrument. So, I've been waiting. And Steve, if you're listening, the owner of the, um, the Playfair Music audio stream and Bottoms Up here in beautiful Point Edward, Ontario. I've been waiting for him to get me a cowbell. Somebody want to send me a cowbell? I'm sure I could play the cowbell like nobody's business. I could ting. You know, you can never have too much cowbell, right? Just saying. So, come on, somebody send me a cowbell. <clears throat> Maybe I could come up with a triangle. I don't know. See, you know why, friends? Because I'm solution-based, not problem-based. And this is what we need to do. So, in the world, there's a lot of people that are solution-based, much like myself, though. So, let's see what's going on in the world. Now, all of these articles are compliments of the goodnewsnetwork.org. Very cool. You know, when I read stories like this first one, it certainly makes me appreciate the fact that I have healthy children and healthy grandchildren, right? Um, very important that we appreciate those things that we take for granted so much. So, very awesome story. Um, a revolutionary treatment has been used to save the life of a young Syrian refugee who suffers from a rare and terrible skin disease. The disease, which is called junctional epidermolysis bullosa, also known as JEB, is estimated to affect only 0.37 people per million. Those who do have the incurable genetic condition, however, are often called butterfly children due to how their <clears throat> excuse me, Skin can blister, burn, and fall off at the slightest touch. Oh, dear. Almost half of the children who are diagnosed with the condition do not make it past adolescence. Wow. The seven-year-old patient in question, whose name was not released in order to protect his privacy, rightfully so, was first admitted to the Ruhr University Children's Hospital in Bochum, Germany, two years ago with blisters covering 80% of his body. Doctors tried treating the boy with antibiotics without success. They also attempted using a skin sample from the boy's father for a skin graft, but his body rejected it. With the boy struggling to hang on in such a devastating condition, physicians were sure he was going to die. In a last effort to save him, they reached out to Michelle DeLuca, from the University of Modena <clears throat> and Reggio Emilia in Italy. De Luca and his team are, renown are renowned for using a specific kind of gene therapy technique to conduct two successful skin grafts in the past, but no one has ever attempted to graft as much skin as the boy needed to survive. Once the team agreed to take on the patient, they took a small sample of the boy's healthy skin and found the broken gene that caused his jeb. After correcting the LAM3 mutation, they then used the sample to grow large sheets of skin similar to the kind that doctors use for burn patients. We are amazing. We are so amazing. Oh my gosh. A few skin grafts la later, the boy was released from the hospital in February 2016, following eight months in intensive care. A little over one year later, he is playing soccer like a normal kid. Though he still has small amounts of blistering on the non-grafted areas of his skin, he has no sign of scarring due to how Jeb only affects the outermost layer of the epidermis. 
It is unknown how his skin will fare in the future, but since DeLuca's two other skin grafts are still healthy 12 years after the operations, he remains optimistic. Additionally, the treatment is extremely promising for curing other butterfly children in the nightmarish disease in the future. Clinical trials are reported now, reportedly now underway. After this, 10 years of struggling to accomplish all these rules and paperwork and bureaucracy, the moment you see a patient like this, you understand it was worth it to do it, says DeLuca in his report of the treatment published in Nature magazine. Isn't that absolutely awesome? Oh my gosh. Wow. That is just so cool. You know, I think in my life, the stuff that we can do, amazing, amazing. And you know, you think back. If you were sitting with your grandparent and you told them all this stuff was going to be going down, that <clears throat> if I told my grandmother or grandfather or whatever that I was going to be on online radio, that I was going to be taking a video of myself with my phone, that somebody was going to be growing skin to help a child, um, you know, live longer, the stuff that we do, oh my gosh, we have so much to be grateful for. We are absolutely amazing. Amazing. Very cool. Okay, so as amazing as we are, we're easily annoyed, right? Let's be honest. Quite often we are easily annoyed by little things, especially little repetitive things. And I'm the same. You know, when you repeat yourself a lot, it's just, ugh, or you hear a scratching noise or something else, it just tends to sort of get under your skin. And my, um, my oldest son, Alec, his girlfriend is going to absolutely appreciate this, I think, because she works at a Japanese restaurant. So, how cool is this? I'm going to send her this after. Um, this new piece of tableware sounds almost like something out of a Seinfeld episode, but it's actually real. In order to address the loud slurping sounds that people make when enjoying a serving of noodles, a company has made an electronic fork that plays noise-canceling sounds through your phone <laughs> whenever you make a loud slurping sound during your meal. Can you imagine sitting in that restaurant instead of the slurping, you're hearing all these other things? The Odohiko fork has been programmed to recognize the sound of slurping through a microphone in its handle. When it detects the slurp, it sends a signal to an app on your smartphone that plays a more pleasant sound over your slurping. The more you slurp, the more fun you have, says a video advertisement from Odo Hoko. Hoko? Hiko. Odo Hiko. Odo Hiko. That's what I'm going with. Nissan, the company responsible for cup noodles, says that they created the Odo Hiko as a means of addressing noodle harassment in Japan. According to Nippon, the Japanese, who generally frown on noisy eating, consider it proper and even preferable to suck up one's noodles with a loud slurping sound. Thus, the phrase noodle harassment was created on social media to describe when travelers are made uncomfortable by the loud slurping sounds made by, by Japanese people when they eat noodles. Whether there are many people who actually experience that cultural barrier remains to be seen. But the Otohiko is still a hilariously creative solution for the problem. The fork is currently available for pre-order on Nissan's website with a release date of December 15th, 2017. Just in time for Christmas. That is so funny. If I can find one, I will buy her one. That is so absolutely cool. So imagine all the different noises you may possibly hear. Somebody might have it set for laughter. Somebody might have it set for... A little jingle, a little song, a dog, a, a, who knows? That is absolutely awesome. So I'm warning you now, this, is a, this one's going to tug on your heart warning. This is a very cool story, and this, my friends, is about true love. Wayne Winters and his wife have been waiting for two years to find a kidney donor that could save her from her stage 5 kidney failure, and Winters became tired of waiting for a miracle. Instead, he took to the streets of far west Utah last month with a sandwich board sign reading, Need Kidney for Wife, followed by the phone number. Every day he would walk for miles down the road in hopes that the right person 
would see a sign and be inspired to donate the life-saving organ. After KSTU broadcasted a story, the 74-year-old husband was inundated with calls and kidney offers, as many as, are you sitting? 800 calls per day. Wow. Now that's tithing, hey, isn't it? Then the Winters got the call that they had been praying for. We have a kidney for you. Get down here, Winters told the news station. I was just so overwhelmed. I didn't know what to think. Ironically, the kidney did not even come from one of the many offers that Winters received. Instead, the organ came from an organ donor who had passed away at the hospital. So the natural course of action had been fulfilled, right? The couple is now celebrating the approach of even more adventures added on to their 26 years of marriage. If she can have a good five years, that would be awesome. We can have our life back, Winters said. Wayne, however, is still pounding the pavement with his sandwich board sign, except now it is encouraging pedestrians to donate their kidneys to the next person in need. Think about it. We could start a kidney revolution, says Wayne. That would be so great. And you know, that kidney revolution ties right in with my love revolution. Hey, feeling the love. Can you imagine just being like, hey, I'll donate my kidney. That is so awesome. Hey, I'll go under a knife for a stranger. Very, very cool. So there you go, friends. There's your good news for today. I hope um, you enjoyed it as much as I did. And I hope you know you're, you're um, surrounding yourself by good news regularly because that's what lifts you up. That's make, what you, makes you feel good. That's what helps you emit some positive emotions. And when you emit positive, you get back positive. I'm positive about it, positively. So there you go. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be posting all those on the Positive Power Facebook page uh, for you to check out at your convenience.